Welcome back everybody. Today we start a new project and it's going to be this engine right here to my right, your left, and it is an LS1 engine. So this is our next project. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the teardown and then we're going to talk about what we're going to do to this thing. But this is a 5.7 liter LS um, all aluminum engine. I know I started the 5.3 the build at one point. I did a teardown on it and I was going to do a 5.3 build. I still may do that in the future. But that particular 5.3 that I tore down, the customer actually backed out on that and I don't have that engine anymore. So. We may do a 5.3. I've done tons of LS builds, but I've never actually done a video and people keep asking. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this LS1. I'll walk you through the disassembly and we'll talk about how we're gonna build this thing and make some decent power. So uh, here we go. Well, first of all, I kinda wanna walk you through this, you guys. This is the tool kit that's made by GM. This is uh, the General Motors official kit that they have for building. Uh, disassembling and reassembling the LS engine and we have tools that we use for installing the rear and front main seals um, we have this is part of the rear crankshaft installer we have the puller to get the balancer off we have uh, front seal installation tools we have the jigs that are designed for getting the front cover and the rear cover centered on the block we have the, this is the tool that if you have the flex plate on the flywheel, you can use this to hold the, the engine in place while you take the balancer off. The, some of these other pullers for the seals and so forth and the, the journal protectors, the gear puller for the front. So it has basically everything you need for doing the LS. Now, you can do an LS engine without this kit. That you don't have to actually have the OEM tools. I'm fortunate enough to have really good connections with uh, people that not only work for GM but also do training for GM and so I was able to borrow this. I did not buy this kit. Um, so uh, I am going to use it. I'm going to show you the way that the OEM wants this done but like I said there are other ways to do this so that way you can see the options that are available to you. All right well, let's get started. We'll start by removing these the valve the center bolt valve covers. The nice thing about the LS gaskets is they have a the captured gasket um, manufacturing design. It makes a really good seal, really good gaskets. So get your valve covers off, set them aside. Also have this cooling system crossover tube. Some of them have a, an assembly that goes runs from the front to the back. On this particular application they just block the two back off and they have a tube running across the front what what these do you guys is this is kind of like a vent steam system and they cross over from bank to bank and what it does is it keeps air out of the system it helps to bleed air out of the cooling system uh, so you don't get air bubbles and so forth in the top of the engine you're gonna want to re remove this And these have a seal and an o-ring that goes on them. There's an o-ring in here. This one actually stuck on the block. You're going to replace those. So you can just go ahead and either pull that out or leave it there. We'll get it out when we clean the head. But take the bolts and make sure you set them aside. You're going to need to put this back on. All right, so that brings us to our rocker assemblies and our valley pan here. Now, in order to get the valley pan off, you have to take the, the knock sensors out. The knock sensors are down in here and they simply take a socket. When you take the oxygen sensor out, I would recommend not using any kind of a power tool on them. Take them out by hand because they, they have a tendency to kind of strip out if you do that. So basically you break them loose, you just run these guys out, and you can actually get the Right, that one there's got some corrosion on it, which is normal. We're probably going to replace these. So once you get those out of the way, next you have your valley pan here. And these are just a 10 millimeter bolt.
you can get some kind of screwdriver or something, but you don't really need to. So th those are your oxygen sensor seals down there on the bottom. And then of course there's a valley pan gasket that goes on there. And that exposes our, our valley here. Now this is an earlier engine, so it doesn't have the variable cam timing pedestals in here. All right, now at that point, we can look at our rockers. So the rockers, the nice thing about the rockers is they are, they are roller rockers. Now one thing that I would really stress here is if you're going to reuse these parts, it is imperative that you keep this stuff in order. We can't, we can't uh, mix up valve train parts because it could cause, if you mix them up, they have wear patterns, they're wear mated, and it, it could cause uh, premature failure and wear if we reuse this. I don't know that we're going to reuse these. But just as a precaution, you definitely want to keep all the valve train parts in order. I like these magnetic trays. They seem to work pretty good. These are a non-adjustable valve train. There is no adjustment on these. They do have aftermarket adjustable rockers you can put on here. But... Uh, Now the one nice thing about this is there is a rail underneath the rockers that you can use to organize these. You can just keep it, they, they just sit in, the, in there and I'll just set them in a tray like this so that I don't have any issues and I'll just make sure I know this goes with this head. I'll just take a piece of cardboard and punch some holes in it and I'm going to put F up here for the front and this is the right head so we're gonna say right hand and that also if I put that that with these it'll tell me where those rockers came from and then I just take and I set the push rods each one in those holes and make sure that we keep them in order but like I said I don't know honestly on this build if we're even gonna reuse these push rods we may or may not but nevertheless you know, you, you never know. They said these parts are still good. This is actually a pretty low mileage engine, so it, it may come to pass that we reuse this stuff. You definitely don't want to mix this stuff up. It could cause rapid wear and could also cause valve train noise if you get wear patterns mixed up. All right, so we'll get the other side off and keep them separate and everything in order, and then we'll get these heads off here. Next, we look at the cylinder heads. Now, GM recommends that you remove the bolts in reverse order of torquing in a circular pattern. So in other words, we're going to start on the end and then you're going to go in a circle to the other end. You want to alternate from end to end going in a circular pattern. That's what General Motors says to do and they designed it so we're going to do what they say. So as we come around, right, we'll go to the next one here. We're just we're just making a circle. The detorque procedure is pretty important because you can actually cause head distortion. And I recommend removing these, keep breaking them loose anyway with a breaker bar. Uh, not a not an air gun. But once you break them loose, then of course you can take an air gun and remove them once you get them all loose. Now remember you've got inner bolts up here too. The head bolts on the LS, the bigger bolts are torque to yield so they're one time use only. These inner bolts in here, there's several small inner bolts, make sure you don't forget to get those out. Those um, according to General Moses can be reused if, if necessary. We may go ARP with this whole thing, I don't know, we'll see. These inner bolts up here are 10 millimeter. Start in the middle and work your way to the outside to get these out. I'm going to put all of my head bolts and fasteners that go on the head in the magnetic tray with the right hand stuff. Well now that we've got all the bolts broken loose it's perfectly acceptable to just take your power tool and run those out. We're going to hang on to these in case the customer wants to see them, but we're definitely not going to reuse them. 
You'll notice that the head bolts in the LS are very, very long and the threads are down toward the bottom. Later on, I'm going to talk to you about why that's important and the, the engineering philosophy behind that. At this point, we basically just kind of pry on the head a little bit and pull it off of there. It should come right off. I just take the end of my breaker bar, put it in the, the intake port, and just gently pry on it. It doesn't take much to get this thing off of here. You don't, definitely don't want to do any damage to it. Then we can take a look at our, our tune here, see what we had going on. Uh, looks pretty good actually, doesn't look too bad. Pretty typical, nothing crazy. It looks like the head gasket was sealing up good. Uh, but yeah, it does have quite a few miles on it. So, And that exposes us to our cylinders. Is It's very typical when you take the heads off of these things that you can still see the crosshatch in the bore. I can still see some of the crosshatch there. These things, they, they, they hold up really well, these cylinders, because they're Nicoseal coated. Take our gasket off. Now, the next thing we have is we have our lifter retainers here. These lifter retainers here are made out of a nylon type plastic. I highly recommend that you replace these. I've seen these break on more than one occasion when they were reused. Take your bolt out. And you just slide your lifters. Your lifters a lot of times will stay in there, sometimes they don't, but it's real easy to fish them out. Now the nice thing is this tray, and of course the, the LS is a factory roller. This makes a really good organizi organizing tray that we can put our lifters into. If the lifters don't stay in the tray, just get a magnet. These should come out fairly easy. Pull each one of them out and put them in the tray. You can also try to tip the motor this way a little bit. And sometimes if you do that, you can get the lifters to slide out with the tray. Not always, but sometimes. Ah, see, we got 50% of them there. So we got two of them to come out. And um, again, we're using this as our organizer. Just lay this in here. We'll get the remainder of those out with the magnetic or the, uh, the magnet or the pick, and then we'll move on. And that's really all there is to it, you guys. Uh, taking the top end off of one of these is a snap. Now also, you, you have a cam sensor here. You wanna make sure you do, don't forget to take this off and you wanna set this aside. All right, so the balancer has a BFB in it, big frickin' bolt. These things are tight. You're gonna have to use a, a pretty good air or battery-operated impact to get this out. Either that, or you can take it out by putting the tool on the flywheel you know, the ring gear and holding it. But this is a really effective way here. You can see I'm turning that engine. That thing is tight. But if you got a good impact, you'll get it out of there. All right, so now we look at the front of our crankshaft. Now, one thing that I would make a note of here that's really important, you guys, if you're doing the Corvette LS1, the Corvette balancer has some, some weighted dowel pins pressed into it. Now, there is no, like on the early small blocks and big blocks and other motors, there's a key, a cotter key on the balancer. There is no key on this balancer. It is simply pressed on with, with no key. And it's a neutral balance on the, most of these. You don't really have to worry about which way it goes on. It might not be a bad idea to mark it. I mean, you can, I'm going to. I'm gonna put a, a yellow mark here, just so I know. I'm gonna put it back the way it was, even though it's neutral. I just got a habit of doing that. On the Corvette now that has the balancing pins in it, you have to make sure that you mark it. It's imperative because those pins have to go back in exactly the same spot. If you're replacing the Corvette balancer with the pins in it, 
you have to have new pins installed into uh, the new balancer in the exact same location and of the same weight. Either that or you just get the whole engine rebalanced, which is probably something that's going to happen anyway. So, but just keep in mind that you do have to, on those applications, keep track of where this thing came off. Okay, so I'm going to put a mark on this just because that's what I always do, even though it's really not necessary on this one. Now, this puller has an end piece to it. The end piece goes right on the end like that. This fits into the crankshaft. Now, some of the cranks have threaded holes out here, and you got to be careful not to put this in there. You got to use the big end on the end of the crank. Uh, this one here doesn't have threads out here, so it just depends on the, the year and the design of the engine. So you just go ahead and put that in there, and then you put your three jaw puller on. Now, GM tells you. To put this tool, this goes onto the back of the motor and these teeth here grab the flywheel and keeps this thing from turning. Well, unfortunately, I don't have the flex plate of the flywheel for this engine. They also tell you to do this by hand without a power tool. Well, they tell you not to use an impact on these, but I've been using an impact on this type of puller on the LSs for years. They're, they're not on that tight, man. They come off pretty easy. So if you just take your impact, basically that's it. Um, that's your, your LS puller. Now at this point, I always take the front cover bolts out. You don't want to take the front cover um, off of here first. You want to get the pan off first and we'll flip it over. And also another thing I would recommend, there may be dex cooler antifreeze in this i pushed this over outside we dumped it upside down and we did get a bunch of dex tool dex cool that we dumped out of it into a into a plastic tray of course so um yeah so next thing is the cover bolts the cover bolts are 10 millimeter now this cover has to be centered on here in order for this not to leak and when we put it together I'll show you how we do that but for now we're just going to take the cover bolts out. Now remember there are some pan bolts that go up into the front of this cover up here. What you don't want to do is try to pry that cover off first. Let's, it's, it's always a good idea to get the pan off first. So at this point, we're gonna rotate the engine upside down. You always wanna make sure that you have some kind of a tray under here. Because even though we've drained the, the oil and coolant and everything, there's always some residual. So we just turn this guy upside down and we start looking at this oil pan. There, now the oil pans are pretty straightforward on these, you guys. One thing that's notable is the oil filter housing is incorporated into the pan here, and that's going to come off with it. Also, there's a couple of long bolts back here that go in the back, and they're a lot smaller. They're fragile, so be careful with them. And this basically is just an extra retaining bolt on the back of the pan here. There's one on each side. And they are 10 millimeter as well. And at this point, we just take our pan off. So gently remove the pan. There's our pan gasket. Doesn't look too bad. Um, the pan gaskets from the factory are riveted on. They rivet it on. That's just for ease of installation. You don't really need to rivet these back on. We break these rivets off and with a new gasket, there's no reason to rivet it. They do that at the factory because they, they're, they're on an assembly line and they have these pans all ready to go and they're just slamming them up there. So that's just a factory assembly deal. Next thing is you got your pickup tube and your windage tray that's gotta come off. So these windage tray nuts that are on here are 13 millimeter. Now that you got your pan off here, you guys also, your front cover is, since you took the bolts out of it, it's basically just dangling up here. In order to get the oil pump pickup tube off, we can just 
very gently. There's your front cover, comes right off. Uh, we got a bolt here that is holding the, the, the pickup tube on. The, the nuts holding the windage tray on are 13 millimeter. You got a little 10 millimeter bolt here. And a re this, there's a retaining clip that goes on here that holds this on. And then of course, there's an O-ring in here. You're gonna wanna replace that when you put this back, but that's gonna be in your gasket set. So pull your tube and your windage tray off and we can look at the bottom end. The LS engine uses a crankshaft mounted oil pump. It's a G-rotor type pump. It just has four bolts holding it on. It's pretty simple to get off of there. Four 10 millimeter bolts holding this pump on. Just kind of gently work that off the key. And there's your oil pump. We'll definitely be replacing that. The Below that is going to be your timing chain set. You can take the three bolts out of the cam. They're also 10 millimeter that are holding this single roller chain on. Take the chain and set it aside. There's also a cam plate on the front of the engine that holds the cam in. And again, if you have a 10 millimeter with a, an LS motor, you own the world. Everything that was true about the old small block Chevy as far as only needing a few tools to pull it apart, all the parts being interchangeable, all that stuff, they continued that tradition with the LT1, you guys. I mean, it's just, it's an amazingly easy engine. It's actually one of the easiest engines you'll ever build. Uh, in my opinion, it's actually easier than some of the early V8 engines. Just the ease of design and the incredibly good design that they have here is, is phenomenal. Once I get this apart, um, I might I might just kind of walk you through all the design features of this engine and why it's so good that way uh, before we assemble it you'll kind of get an idea of what we're working on all right so get your the, the bolts out of your plate that plate comes off of there and then we start looking at our six bolt mains we have six bolts in the main caps on these we have four bolts here and then they're also cross drilled on the side and there's bolts going in the side so you want to make sure you get those out as well there is a seal on the inside of the plate. The plate actually blocks off the front oil gallery plugs and that's what that seal is for. So that's a capture gasket type seal. We're gonna to wanna to replace that when we put this plate back on. At this point, we could actually pull our cam out, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna pull the uh, crankshaft out because it's easier to get to the cam doing that. If you look, you can see that there are bolts in the sides. These are cross drilled. I usually take those out first and you guessed it, they are a 10 millimeter. And they're not really torqued very tight. They're, they're just basically, they've just basically added these so that the structural integrity of the skirt here actually is kind of incorporated with the uh, the main cap and it seems to work out really good these things can take a lot of power all right so we got our cross bolts out on that side we'll get the other ones out and then we start taking our piston and rod assembly. removing our piston and rod assemblies you can actually use the the balancer uh, crank bolt in here it works pretty good to rotate the crank and then you basically want to put your piston and rod assemblies at bottom dead center. Always check and make sure these rods have clearance. They're moving here and they're not burnt black. That's an indication that there's something wrong with the bottom end of the motor. This one turns really good and the connecting rods are not burnt or anything. So we got a, looks like we got a good short block here. This was a running engine. So we're just going to bring our piston and rod assembly to bottom dead center here. It's a good idea to number these. These are, you want to keep these in order just uh, for inspection purposes. We we'll probably won't reuse these, but I always take and number these. Now, later on, once I get them out, if I end up cleaning these, we'll engrave the numbers on these because paint markers are great, but 
if these go to the vat tank, those paint marks are going to disappear. So we got to make sure we... I don't like the number stamps where you stamp them because it shocks the, the rod. So I always use paint markers or an engraving tool. And we'll get three and four here. Before we start taking them out, we'll just number all of these. All right. Now, like I said, bring that to bottom dead center. The LS uses a powdered metal cracked cap rod and it has an 11 millimeter cap screw. So you want to get these loose. and remove that cap and you'll notice that if you look closely at this the parting line is a break here it's not a it's not a machine surface sometimes the bearing will stay in there make sure you get that out of there so there's our bearing it looks really good we'll keep that with our cap we want to keep all this stuff in order just for inspection and possibly assembly purposes. Now we have a couple of tools here. GM provided this. You can use uh, anything that threads in there that's soft or aluminum, but the these are the GM tools and they're just gonna screw in. You don't even have to screw these in all the way. They're basically just gonna screw in and this keeps the rod from damaging the crankshaft or the cylinder wall. And then you just gently tap that out of there. We're going to use a dead blow and just tap that out. Now the one thing you need to make sure you do is you got to catch this thing on the other side. And then it should come right out of there. So there's your, there's your stock LS piston rod assembly. This is a powdered metal forged rod, and these are cast pistons. The, the, one of the weak spots on this engine is the pistons. They're actually, when I say weak, they're not that bad. They actually are good up to seven or 800 horsepower. It's been proven many times by a lot of people that these pistons break around 1,000 horsepower. But they weren't designed for 1,000 horsepower. They were designed for like five, 600. So for that level, they're perfectly acceptable. Always take the cap that you took off of this particular connecting rod and put it back with the rod. You can't mix these caps up. The other thing here, this is real critical, you guys. Since this is a fractured or a, a cap that's uh, been broken off, they didn't machine this. They made it as one piece and then they broke the cap, so the parting line is a break. It's really important that you get this cap on right. If you flip the cap on and torque it on backwards or tighten it down, you'll actually ruin this connecting rod. The bearing notches here, there's a bearing locating notch. They go to the same side of the rod. And also, if you look, you can see there's a rounded side to this and there's a flat side. It's pretty obvious if you get it on there backwards. If I were to put this on like this, you can see that the the flat side of the rod and the rounded side, they, they don't match up. That's a big mismatch there. So the, the flat sides are going to go to the same side. And then, of course, the other side is rounded like that. That's going to go to the same side. And the notches, again, the, the bearing notches are going to be on the same side of the rod. And that's basically it. So you're, you're going you're gonna to repeat that seven more times. I'm not going to film every single piston and rod being removed out of this engine. I've told you this so many times on other engines. If you really have to see all eight of these come out, just rewind this video, rewind uh, this upload seven more times and watch me take this one out seven or eight times. And 
if that makes you feel better, but I don't really think that's necessary. So I'll get the pistons out and then we'll come back and uh, we're, we're just about finished with our disassembly. Then we can talk more about this thing, what we're gonna do. All right, so now we've got all the piston and rod assemblies out. We've got all our, our main cap bolts loose. You take your main cap bolts out, we're gonna replace all these. And then we simply remove the main caps. I put numbers on these, but these are actually numbered over here in this corner from the factory, one through five. And the next step is to pull those main caps. We wanna pull them straight up out of there. We don't wanna like bind this skirted area down here. There's a couple ways to do it. There's a special tool for it, or you can do it the old school way. And I'll, I'll show you both. So the factory tool kit has a slide hammer that goes on here and pulls these off. But if you take some decent size pry bars or screwdrivers and you just, just kind of pry straight up on that, they come right out. It's not, you don't got to make a big deal about this. Of course, the, the middle cap is your thrust, your thrust cap, so it's going to have the thrust uh, bearing in it. Now here's a tip, guys. Before you take that rear cap out, it's a good idea to take the rear cover off because the flange of this kind of hangs over that rear cap. And on the other side, you got this reluctor wheel here. You don't want to damage this reluctor wheel. It's real critical that you're careful with this. So we don't want to pull this over into the reluctor wheel, so take your cover off first. can be a little challenging to get to all these bolts when you've got the, the engine on the, the engine stem like this. You're just going to have to get a, if you can't get a socket on those, you're going to have to get a wrench in there and get those. Okay, so once you get the bolts out of that rear cover, it's just a matter of kind of tapping that cover off of there. It's, it comes off real easy. So that's your rear cover. Uh, there's your gasket and your rear main seal. Now we have access to this, this uh, cap. We can get it off without damaging that reluctor wheel. Gentle, so you don't cause any issues with that wheel, because if you damage that, you're gonna be in trouble, so. Now that we've got the caps off, basically just a matter of lifting the crankshaft straight out of there. Also, you want to store this crank somewhere safe. You want to keep this, this wheel from getting bent. You don't ever want to lay it on this reluctor wheel or damage it or bend it. So you got to put this somewhere where this is not going to get damaged because if this, this gets damaged, you're going to have to replace the crank. Um, 
take it straight out of there and that that's basically it so you just got to take a just a something and lightly tap that out of there it comes right out now the camshaft the one thing about the cam is there is a there's a cam sensor up top that we need to get out before we take the cam out otherwise we're going to damage it so that is this guy right here so you want to get this thing off of here before you try to pry that crank out or pull that crank out this this should come out of there just like that so this kind of locks into the cam so you want to make sure that you don't damage this by trying to pull the cam out now as far as the camshaft goes uh, the crank out of the way first because that way you can just very gently and easily kind of help this thing out of here you want to make sure you don't damage any of these cam bearings by jamming one of these journals into it so you just be really careful and slow and make sure that you don't force this thing out of the engine it should come out you got to kind of finagle it so it lines up with those bearings and just gently pull it through the, main, the, the cam bearings there. And that is your LS1 cam. Now we're down to the bare block. Also, another thing we want to do is before we take this to the machine shop, the machine shop will usually do this for you. You want to pull all the gallery plugs out of it. There is a gallery plug in the back. If you just take and you grab a hold of that thing and just pry on it a little bit, it pops right out like that and GM tells you that if the o-ring is still good on this it's not broken you can actually reuse this the front cover is what holds that in place so that goes in just like that but in order to clean the block at the machine shop we want this out so we can get the the chemicals and everything in for cleaning in these oil galleries there's also another plug in the front of the block you don't really need to take that out. In fact, I recommend you don't. It's a press-in plug up front. As long as you get this end of the gallery plug out, this, this piece here, you'll be able to clean the block without taking the front one out. And that is it, my friends. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to talk to you a little bit about... Now, we're going to send all this out to the machine shop. I want to talk to you about some of the architecture of this block. All right, guys, so here's the bare block after the disassembly. And basically everything that we just disassembled off of this engine is pretty much sitting right here. We got the crank and the rods, the pan, all the valve train parts, the heads, just a box of some miscellaneous bolts and so forth, the front covers. And that's really all there is to it. One thing you're going to find out as we do this, and I'm going to talk about the architecture of this engine uh, next after I get this cleaned up a little bit but uh, the LS engine is absolutely one of the simplest engines to build uh, and it also uh, has yields great power potential so um, once I get this cleaned up I'm gonna come back and I want to talk to you about this engine a little bit